Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from KitGuru, and today I'll be taking a look at the Noctua NH U12S TR4 SP3. Now conveniently, as is not always the case, manufacturers have been quite helpful with their air cooler naming structures. And as you could expect, the TR4 in the NH U12S's name suggests compatibility with the TR4 socket. In this instance, the NH U12S TR4 is only compatible with the TR4 socket. You won't find mounting for any other socket, so if you aren't considering, um, or you don't already have a Threadripper build, this is probably not going to be the cooler for you. As is to be expected from Noctua though, the feature list for this £73.99 120mm air CPU cooler does still look pretty good. Firstly, the included fan is a premium Noctua NFF12 in the expected colours, which features integrated anti-vibration rubber mount, as well as no, a low noise adapter, which is promising for audible noise. The contact surface is also nice and large at 70 by 56 millimetres, uh, perfect for the larger Threadripper CPU. It's also fully copper, along with the heat pipes, and then it's nickel plated. Noctua also back up the NH U12 STR4 with a pretty beefy six year manufacturer warranty, which is also nice for peace of mind. Packaging follows other Noctua products with lots of cardboard origami stuff, and in the box we find the cooler itself and a well packaged accessory box, which includes instructions, a second set of rubber isolation pads and wire mounts for adding a second fan for a push pull configuration, which is also really nice to see. You also receive a healthy amount of thermal compound, uh, the aforementioned low noise adapter, and a long Allen key, which will likely be needed during installation. With the cooler out of the box, we can take a closer look. Although the TR4 in the name suggests specific mounting for the TR4 socket, outside of this difference, it's essentially the same as the standard NHU12S. The cooler is the same dimensions at 158 by 125 by 45 millimeters, and you get the same number of heat pipes, essentially the same core construction. It still feels nice and solid, uh, the core difference being the larger CPU contact surface, which also increases the weight a little to 870 grams with the fan installed. Moving on to installation, it's a pretty simple exercise as the NHU12S uh, comes pre-set up for the TR4 socket. The two pre-installed mounting brackets aren't symmetrical, uh, just like the socket, so you can only orient the cooler one way. The retention screws are all captive too, so really all that's required is to add your thermal compound and set the cooler atop your CPU. I elected to remove the fan prior to installation, just to make accessing these screws a little easier. You can then take the included long Allen wrench and tighten down the four mounting screws. Once fully tightened, you just need to plug in the 4-pin PWM connection to your motherboard's uh, CPU fan header, and you're done. That's it. Although the lack of support for other sockets is of course a little bit limiting, uh, it helps hugely with installation times, making the NH-U12S TR4 probably the quickest cooler I've come across to install, basically just a couple of minutes. Taking a quick look at RAM clearances, the main body of the cooler is narrow enough not to interfere with your memory dims. But with the 120mm fan installed, uh, the fan does overhang the first closest slot a little bit. This isn't so much a problem for low profile RAM as the fan positions just atop it, still making good contact with the rest of the cooler. Uh, but with a high profile kit, like say the Guile Evo RGB kit we normally use, you will have to bump the fan up just a little bit. With the Guile Evo RGB installed, uh, this did look pretty ridiculous, but as we are using only a four dim kit, this wasn't any issue for me. If you are planning on populating every slot on your motherboard though, low profile memory would definitely be the way to go. With the cooler installed and the fan clipped back on, uh, it's over to testing. As the NHU12S TR4 only supports the TR4 socket, uh, we're going to have to use a Threadripper test setup. For the CPU, we are testing with the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, a 16 core 32 thread beast, installed in a Gigabyte X399 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. For RAM, we are using a 32GB kit of G-Skill Flare X running at 3200MHz, and storage is handled by a 120GB Samsung 840 EVO SSD. Powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU, and just to enable a display output, an NVIDIA GTX 980 was also installed. For testing, we ran a number of tests, both with the 1950X locked in at 3.4GHz, and overclocked on all cores to 4GHz with a core voltage of 1.4V to generate kind of a worst case temperature scenario. 
as the 1950X is not really going to be an optimal CPU for gaming, uh, we elected to run Prime95 to establish a highest possible temperature at both 3.4 and 4 gigahertz. And as the 1950X is also more suited uh, to productivity applications, we use passes of Cinebench and the Blender BMW benchmark to record some temperatures during typical use. All temperatures taken are delta T values, which means we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details on our full testing methodology can be found over on kitguru.net. And on to the results, taking a look at Prime95 first. With our 1950X overclocked to 4 GHz on all cores, temperatures for a single 120mm air cooler look really good at just under 65 degrees at full load and idling at 8.5 degrees. At stock, the NH-U12STR4 uh, seems a little bit more at home with a highest recorded temperature of 40.4 degrees and a slightly lower idle temperature of 7.4. Cinebench's multi-core test zips by so fast with all 32 threads being put to use, uh, so we ran a number of passes to ensure that temperatures stabilised, and all we can really see is a small drop down from our prime testing, uh, 61.8 degrees max at 4 GHz. There is of course quite a drop down when running a single core pass, a better indication of temperatures when not using heavily threaded applications. Our Blender BMW benchmark testing is a bit more of a real world scenario test for the 1950X and the NH-U12STR4 still performs well with 62.4 degrees when overclocked and 39.4 degrees at 3.4 GHz. Not bad temps to see from a single 120mm cooler and audible noise is also pretty good. At absolute full chat, the NH-U12STR4 measures at 46.2 dBA, a little bit louder than the Dark Rock Pro TR4, which makes sense considering how much harder it has to work to maintain temps whilst only operating with a single fan. The included low noise adapter wasn't used during testing though, so this is certainly something which could be implemented uh, if you wanted to reduce audible noise even further. Although the NH-U12STR4 was audible with our 1950X overclocked, it was significantly quieter at stock speeds, even again at full load. So to summarise, overall the NH-U12STR4 is still a pretty good little cooler. It's clear Noctua have simply adapted an existing option from their range to accommodate the much larger Threadripper CPU size, uh, but it still does a good job of handling the higher TDP, uh, even with the same dimensions and same included fan as the standard NH-U12S. Installation is also an absolute breeze, one of the simplest processes I've come across in recent years. There are a couple of small issues I have with the NH-U12STR4 though. Uh, firstly the price. At £73.99 it does strike me as a little bit strange that it's almost £20 dearer than the standard NH-U12S. Although I appreciate the larger copper base, with so many similarities I would expect the price to be closer to the standard model. Secondly, being priced at £73.99 brings the NH-U12STR4 very close to other £80 or thereabouts options, much larger dual fan TR4 socket air coolers available. When making a quick comparison what you are actually receiving for your money, uh, you do seem to be getting a bit more with some of these alternatives. This being said, performance is still strong for such a simple cooler, and its smaller dimensions do make it a great option if space is a concern or you're building something a bit smaller form factor. It's not really going to be a great option for overclocking, say, but for a simple get it installed and get going cooler for a Threadripper CPU at stock speed, say, the Noctua NH-U12STR4 does basically exactly what it says on the tin. As always, thanks for checking out this review of the Noctua NH-U12STR4. Make sure to leave a like or dislike, uh, or even a comment below to share your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider clicking subscribe, and for notifications of new KitGuru video releases, don't forget to hit the bell icon below. I've been Silas from KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.